Um, so yeah, so that's just what we're going to talk about. Civic CRM, scale reminders. What are they? What can they be used for? Tokens, what are they? And SMS as well. Just quickly, it's more than anything else. Um, scheduled reminders, if you want to have a play around, you can have a play with them on dmasterdemo.cbcrm.org. Um, Is that right? It looks like too many dots in that. I'm now trying to think what the thing is, but anyway, I'll figure it out afterwards. Um, so just quickly, what are scheduled reminders? They're, they're something that are really, really, really useful to all in Civi. Um, and most people find them by just setting them up from the events page. Uh, it's the first time you usually come across them. It's all on the, you know, the top things. You've got the options and it's always telling you set a scheduled reminder. So I'm just going to open up my demo site. If you can hear drilling, I apologize. It seems to be next door neighbor, which isn't really helpful. Start. Hang on a sec, I'm just going to share this tab now. Oh, I prefer, this is where I'm going to say I prefer Krugel Chrome, which is a bit weird. There we go, that one, share. Yes, right, so this is our GMZ databases, um, general city CRM site, demo site. It's a, it's all right. It's one we tend to sort of like do a lot of work on and sometimes you find that somebody's done something weird. So usually you come across um, scheduled reminders from the events page and it's quite useful. You know, you come across the uh, scheduled reminders. So you'd, no, you know, you'd normally add a reminder at this page. So what title, testing, Reminder and participant stages again okay, doesn't really matter when it's going to be and we're going to do this 24 hours before the event start date who it's from me and he's mine and i'm not going to live it to anything i just i'm not really going to go through this in too much detail because this isn't where i want to talk about mostly uh let's get a reminder so you set a scheduled reminder here, subject, oh, event, can't spell, sorry, event, and I can't spell happening. Okay, and I'm just going to save that. So that set up a reminder, but the only thing with this is it's only set up the reminder for this event. And it's real pain. All right, I've got another event coming up. Right, I'm going to set another scheduled reminder. So this is useful if you're only ever going to send this text to this event. Now, ideally, you don't want to do that, do you? You want to have one um, reminder that goes across all events, or, or at least across all event types, maybe. You might want to say something to a, um, a conference, or you may want to send something to a um, to do an online training, but they might be the same for all of those types. And if, if that's the case, you don't have to keep doing this. It's just takes too long, really. So if we go to administer, if you don't have administer, you do need to have administer rights to get to the communications and scheduled reminders. That's where I always, I always tend to ignore the event one and just set up a general one across all events. Because to be fair, it means I can forget about it. So I'm just gonna go here. And you can see here, I've now got this reminder for event name database exhibition. And these are the test ones I've set up. So, I could look at that one and say event reminder conference and event type conference. So I'm just going to add a reminder using this method. So it's everything. Add reminder. If this looks slightly different, this is just because it's using the Shoreditch theme, by the way, um, which actually works now. So quite happy with it. 
as you can see, it looks very similar, apart from we've got this big chunk here, which has got the entity. So when you're setting up um, your scheduled reminder, you can set it up at this page based on all of these entities. So contribution page or type, activity, event type or name, membership, event template, and contact. So you can actually use it for certain things about contacts. So contact, you can use it for a scheduled reminder on birth date. You might want to do each anniversary. So you could set up a really basic scheduled reminder that goes to all of your um, contacts on their birthday. Happy birthday. It's silly, but you know, for some people it might be useful. It's probably not where we're at. So let's go back to contribution type. So we could set up a, I'm going to set it up. So contribution donation failed. Oops. Failed. Let's try this. So all I want to do here is contributions happened, but for whatever reason, it's failed. We might want to send this to a specific person or so to do, do, do 24. Let's see date. And yes, yeah, so 24. So you can either set it on a date, which obviously doesn't really work for a scheduled reminder, so tend to ignore it. Um, you can either set it for 24 hours, days weeks, months, years. You could set scheduled reminders years afterwards, years, which is a slow and likely we're going to do anything 24 years in advance, mind you. So let's stick in with 24 hours and a bit after that date. But obviously you've got the options of before. If you're trying to do a contribution that failed type, it's unlikely you're ever going to do before, but you know what I mean. Um, and here it's going to come from uh, me and again. And then if you've got a template, you can use a template. But let's put payment failed. And we can put I and we can use the tokens at this point, which is quite useful to in tried make a payment. Failed. Please try again. And we could pop the link in there to the payment payment contribution page. Hang on a sec. What is my contribution page? It is open. Yeah, and I've got donate. So, no, no, no. can you still see which screen can you see at the moment? You're all quiet. I can't hear anyone. Yeah, uh, it's the the scheduled reminder page. Okay, well, I've lost that. I've lost that. Thank you. There we go. Found you again. Found the page. So, you know, how to do, how we can put that link in. And as usual, you've got the plain text format and the HTML format. On scheduled lines, I do tend to try to keep it simple, um, but you can obviously have a nice image in here if you wanted to. Um, I say nice, I don't think I've got any nice ones. Oh. I have no idea why that tree is there, but you know, it's a nice tree. Uh, so you can you can have these formatted 
these, um, you know, and you can also mess with the source. So you can create really professional looking failures on that. And then you could send someone back and you just go, cheers. All right. Just save that. So that now will send to have the person that is it's failed. It's going to send a message to say, thanks for your donation. Unfortunately, for some reason, it's failed. Do you want to try again? And these things are quite useful. I'll add another one for an activity this time, I think. And because activities opens up quite a lot of different options. So, you know, and these are the default ones that are obviously there. contribution you might choose. Um, and again, you can choose membership sign up. You could choose membership renewal activities maybe cancelled, you can even do activities on, um, let's do it just on a meeting because I can't. So we used to use um, activities for counselling. So pretty much all we used to do is have an activity that would have been called counselling and basically status. And I used to have it, so it was just set 24 hours before the activity date again from me from that recipients and this is where you get slight different options so you could send a you could set up a scheduled reminder which what we used to do is a scheduled reminder that went out to the target because we used to use the target for the counselee counts people person being cancelled um and we then have a nice template here that basically said something on the lines of counseling. And we just do things like hi, first name. You have an. And then you've got some activity tokens here. So if you've got, a, you, maybe you've used the subject for what the information is on date. So you're going to have activity date and time. We, now this is sometimes doesn't appear. Yeah, we have, a, there is extensions that actually ex extend the use of tokens that can actually um, show who the assignee is, which is quite useful for our counselling clients. At the moment, it's not working, though, on the um, extension with the new version of Civic. So we're going to have to spend some time and money to get it working, which is a, a pain. Um, but that's what happens, unfortunately. So not we could put in here we've got the new extension working you'll be able to put in here activity assignee so the person knows all right i've got a council appointment and it's with my activity assignee but yes that is not working at the moment with the latest update the security update broke everything which is nice of it with activity and to be fair it was written by aiden about three years ago um, six years ago, so it's done quite well to last this long. Uh, and imagine that says assignee and it worked. We could do cheers. Oh, cheers anyway. Um, do, 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 do. Sorry. So, again, you use the same sort of thing for the plain text. And if you've got SMS working, you can actually use SMS as well, but it gives you a different. If you didn't. Um, I always tend to set them two separate ones, but let's forget about that for a minute again. And just click save. And again, that is what have I saved that as activity target. Um, but we could have had that as the activity assigned name. Again, so that's activity goes into the assignee as opposed to 
and we're going to call that activity I cannot spell this that's about right and scheduled again and we're going to send that one 48 hours maybe because they might need to do some prep to our assignee because they're the counsellors your And I might just don't have that one. And again, hi, your appointment is on date and time. When you're doing when you're doing scheduled reminders, these tokens are dependent on what option you choose here. So they are linked based on, so if you have an event type, if you choose an event activity here, your tokens here will be based around the event. As I'm talking, uh, doing activity ones, I've got actions that are based around the activity. So it does make a difference. So if you're sometimes trying to do a scheduled reminder and going, why is that not there? It's chances are that that token isn't available within this entity up here. So. Again, there's some extensions that do extend the tokens, which are useful to just try out if you can't find what you're looking for. You can also include custom um, custom code, custom, uh, your brain's not working, custom, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, literally, my brain stopped working. Custom fields. There you go. Couldn't remember fields. How about that? Um, you can include custom fields. You just need to know the code for the custom field. So it's a little bit more awkward. But if we just go to custom fields here, I'm just going to leave this for a minute because it is useful. So gift aid declaration. If you're editing the screen, you'll be tell it'll tell you what the um, code is when you're editing the custom data. So you could start using those custom data little codes like ID 108, things along those lines, and you can start putting custom code in. Off the top of my head, I cannot remember what the token is. Aiden, what's the token for custom code for custom fields? Your, I think it's just custom underscore and the number yeah that's what i was thinking it's it is something really stupid silly like that so it's nothing mm. it's nothing complicated so you know, sec. so it would be eighty nine. So i will get the actual I'll get some examples of what custom code looks like before and I'll add it to that little presentation thing just so people can see it and copy and paste it. Um, but yeah, it's just finding out what that custom code is and all that will, if that custom code isn't relative to an, an activity, it's not gonna, it's not gonna pick it up. You just won't know it's there. Um, so if in this activity of say donate, Donate, I did not donate, did I? Um, well, I'm where I am. So if that activity doesn't actually have any custom data that's related to that, it's just not going to show anything. That custom code will just be blank because when it's sending out this um, scheduled reminder, it's going to be looking within the activity database table and if that custom code doesn't appear in it it's just not going to show so you do have to be slightly aware that so if you've got some custom code that's some custom fields that are sitting on your activity and that you're picking from it will appear if it doesn't appear in that activity it's just not going to show so just be thinking about that more than anything else
But yes, just because there's a diff those tokens don't show you custom fields, you can use them. You just need to know the ID. And then you can start putting some really complicated scheduled reminders together, you know, depending on what you put in the um, in the information. Okay. I'm just going to cancel this one because I've got had to remind again. Right. That's better. It's because I went back. So I'm going to say, and you can also do scheduled reminders based on when things have been completed. So maybe you've done something like had an activity, you might want to send them a link out to a feedback form. So you can start doing like one day, sorry, one day after activity day time um, from me again. You can also choose recipients, activity assigned. Yeah, I'm going to send that. If you want to, you can do repetition. Oh, I don't think I've ever used that in my life, personally. Um, but I suppose you could, if you were sending out something to a, using a profile, someone to register and change their status, check, update something, you could actually send out a spam email to them basically saying, you haven't updated yet, you haven't updated yet, you haven't updated yet. Personally, I do try to avoid that because GDPR does kind of doesn't want you to do that type of thing. But it is an option. So you could say every hour until until the activity date, spam this person with this until they've updated their status on this activity to that. It's, yeah, it's not something that um, I recommend doing. And Craig, didn't you have problems trying to get this working last time? Um, I can't, I've got it working on a couple of sites when it's using membership. So like a, a membership status. So th that kind of, uh, that kind of thing. So like maybe sort of like you, you want to send out a, a three month reminder and then sort of like send it out again, like a month later, but obviously, but th and that works on the membership status of sort of like, um, in grace or, or but if they are expired so that those can keep on going for x number of repetitions so yeah i'd, I'd use it for membership i don't think if i'd use it on activities or or anything else hmm. i know i think we tried it on an activity just wasn't doing the repetition which is um it wasn't any we were just testing and playing around with it to be perfectly honest and it wasn't really critical, so we kind of left it because it didn't do what we wanted it to do. But yes, so if you're in a membership option, so you might have so the annual coffee club has got auto renew options, reminder for both. So you've got so many different things to play around with on using the administrator custom data. Uh, sorry, communications, I always think it's in custom, but it's in communications and scheduled reminders. You can start building some really complicated things that you can just forget. Um, the only thing that I will say is when you've, when you've got them set as text message, if you don't have your text messaging system set to auto renew um, with credit, it's very easy for you to forget about it and then no one tells you that they haven't got any text messages for weeks. Um, and that's you, and, it, and it's all, it's not sending out text messages and you go and find out that you haven't put your money on for weeks or something like that. And that's usually where I found the fault is, but it is something to be aware of with text messaging. It's not, you don't get ever get a failure thing from Clickertown and Twillow that says, we're not sending it. Siddy goes to Twillow and says, send that, will you? And Twillow goes, okay, and then checks and goes, oh, you've got no money, and it doesn't then feed that back to the system. It just doesn't send any messages out. So it is something to be aware of with text messaging that um, somebody needs to know who owns the account and make sure it's getting paid. But it's really quite 
simple. It does just work. And I like it for, especially for events. If you've got a lot of event type set up that you send the same information out all the time, it's so easy to just set one up and say event reminder. And I'm only going to send it out for fundraisers. And again, I'm going to send this a week before actually the event start date. And I've got a template I may have created already. Do, 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 do. Don't think it's Williams test mailing. Don't know why I've got Williams test mailing here. Event scheduled reminder. So this is the kind of message I would send, send out. Look, you booked on this event, which is happening on event start date at event location. You can also put hi in the thing. You can also put the tokens up here. Just copy that one. Reminder of da -da -da. So at least that one is a bit more personal. I can update that template because templates are used in exactly the same way on reminders and that, on scheduled reminders as they used in every other part of Civic. Again, it's always best to send a plain text version of email as well. It's more likely to get through spam filters and, um, you know, Microsoft is quite fussy. So sometimes if you've got a HTML version and a plain text version, it's more likely to get through and not end up in spam. So it's always worth doing just for that. And you can update the template as usual, or you can say it's a new template, or you can do both. I'm not going to do, I'm just going to update that one and save that. Ugh. If you're enable repetition, you must indicate the frequency and ending term. I didn't mean to. So apologize for that. But SEVI is usually quite good at telling you what you've got wrong. If you do mess it up, it is quite useful. And to be perfectly honest, I just love the fact that they, over the last few years, they've opened up this so you can just start typing things in here. It was a bit of a pain to have to go into each one of those and update it. Um, and that is just saying, so event reminder fundraiser, it's only going out to the event type of fundraiser. It's going to go one week before the start date because you're trying to get people. There's no repeating and it's active. If at any point you want to actually turn them off, you can do them the same as you do with everything else. You can just disable them here. And that stops it. It's always worth double checking what you've got set up um, just in case there's some random thing that that someone set up ages ago that's carrying on happening and you've changed maybe what you're using the event type conference for and there's still an old event type conference scheduled reminder that someone goes why am i getting this because yeah we've had that before as well um just another thing i just want to talk about just add another reminder oh no that. Again, contribution, you can do, if you've got contribution pages, you can actually sort of like different things for different contribution pages rather than contribution type. So you may have donation, but you may have multiple contribution pages that are all designed for say maybe organizations or they may be designed against individuals and you want to have a different type of message. So the way Sylvie says, well, you can do it either blanket contribution type thanks or you can have a bit more of a well that contribution page we're going to say this and then this one we're going to say that type of message so it's you know you've got this flexibility to add well what's the to streamline your workflows really and you can as i say and the fact that you can use against activities not just events not just memberships not just contributions means that you can actually do this for literally anything within your system rather than just thinking about the basic stuff. Um, 
Uh, did it, anything I haven't mentioned? I don't think so. You, as I say, email is quite useful, so you can send it to someone completely different. You can send it to groups, so if you you can pick groups. You can also on some of them, but not all of them, is limit the rep recipients. So if I'm going back to events. So on here, you can limit them to a group. So if you've got an event type, you may have a smart group or you may just want to send it out to a certain subset of the of your database. So I'm, I'm trying to think of an example where we've used it before. Um, Councillors, we may... Do, 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 do. No, we've set up things for people who've got their facilitators. So they've got their facilitators into a group. So we've got an event type. You know, you can set up an event scheduled reminder for just the facilitators. Hey, these are the facilitators. This is the information you need. And it would only go to those out of that event type rather than everybody in it. So it is quite useful. Don't use it much. But you can do it by participation role. So you could, you know, again, instead of send that scheduled reminder out to everybody that attended. So that's actually maybe feedback. You want to get the feedback for a course. You can limit it to the attendees, not anyone who's a host or speaker. So, you know, there are small things that you can do. So you're just not filling up people's um, email with stuff that they don't really require. It's not used much, but it's an option. And majority of time, let's be brutally honest, we probably don't do it properly and add people that are volunteers and add people that speakers to our events because we just, yeah. Well, okay, I never do it properly. I'll say that rather than everyone else doesn't. But, yeah, so you could do the limited. I'm only going to ask for feedback for anyone who's an attendee. I might actually have a thank you for the host that always goes out after the end of a meeting. Thanks for doing this. It's really useful. So, again, they feel that they're getting some recognition, and but you haven't actually had to do any work past the first setting up of the scheduled reminder. So, yes, it's, um, yeah, it's kind of as simple as that, really. It's not, it's not complicated. It's always useful to test them. So, you know, whenever you're doing a setting up a scheduled reminder, test it. Uh, one of the key things I, we used to find on at uh, Mind is that someone would set the the wrong times for the event or the um, the counseling session. They'd set it at 10 p.m. instead of 10 a.m. and so therefore the client would get 24 hours before at 10 p.m. a text saying, don't forget your appointment at 10 p.m. tomorrow. And then they get a little bit confused. Um, the way I used to get around that is by just turning off 24, putting it on 24 hour clock. But it is just something to be aware of. The system isn't clever. The other thing to be aware of is if you're setting it a day before the event start date, it won't do it at the time. It will send it just really at the time that the cron job runs or the scheduled jobs is set to run. So, you know, getting an email at midnight about an event starting the next day sometimes might irritate people. So it's just another thing to just be aware of more than anything else. Um, yeah, I mean, I, this is why usually when you get weird emails at daft o'clock at night from, it's just because the it's the way it's set up. Uh, as I say, I always like to, keep it 24 hours or the hours because I can limit it to when it's going out at that point. Um, any questions about scheduled reminders? Because I've rattled through that quite quickly, I know. I'm not going to drag you across. Where are you? There you go. Ah, there we go. I can see, I can see a few people again. Yeah, thanks for that, Barry. That was great. Does anyone have any questions?
Everyone's really quiet on your side today, I don't see. <laughs> Nicholas? Um, I've got one which it, it doesn't really, re well, it relates to more management of lots of scheduled reminders. Because what I've found is a, a little bit of an issue when you start using them quite a lot is um, it's not very easy to see the pathway of the emails when they're what's going out when and to who so in order to get around that and sort of share that with other staff i've ended up making this this sort of overview in google docs with a spreadsheet which shows like the the timeline and then the different streams of who's getting what when um because we'll use it for like the welcome emails once a member joins and then also the expiry emails but also between between that time it's like different membership types different regions yeah there's all all sorts of different pathways um and i was just wondering if anyone else has coming come across another means of mapping that out or I mean, my first thought on that is it might be city rules is a better option for showing workflows rather than using um, scheduled reminders at that point. Scheduled reminders are useful tools, but city rules does give you more flexibility and shows you a bit more of the, the, the process flow. Um, and you also know that they're doing a, they've done an extension again. I'm sure the, um, they've done an extension again to help improve that workflow you've been using city rules craig on some of the sites would that make more sense to use that um i use city rules very sparingly i know that it's um very kind of powerful but um i've, I've not i've not used it myself especially around those kind of workflow messages um i think it's the way that i've seen other people talk about the power of civil rules is the um can yeah let's like say the donor journey sort of like the x days after the first donation you get this message and then another week later you get another message and things like that so i think i think civil rules becomes more powerful when you've got a series of messages to get away um to get to people I know, I know it's been used they sort of like they've been chatting on a few demos that they've done which i didn't attend unfortunately um but it was talk literally was talking about that donor journey about this is what happens when you do this and you can see it um on the on the docs page you've got a list of what actions happen which is probably easier to see and much easier to maintain from than the scheduled reminders on that type of thing so you could show them this is what happens and you can see the who it goes to when it goes out and who it's um and, and you know what actions are happening and when they're happening so city rules is quite powerful on that scheduled reminders is really for that hey i'm not i'm going to put this information in here and they kind of forget about it um i don't really need to see it too much i just want it to happen once and then move on City rules is much more about that. All with this process flow that's going to happen if this does this, if that does that, if that does that. And I think if you're trying to see that visually, city rules might be an option to have a look at. Cool, thank you. Great, were there any other questions about scheduled reminders or any comments? I've got a few comments. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so when we would, uh, we're looking at the, the, the custom fields um, and the tokens for those, those should be in the drop down for tokens, um, <clears throat> which might be easier to add. Oh, okay. uh, and they come out as something like contact dot custom underscore, whatever. Um, so they, they should be in there. Um, you talked about um, rules and and sort of donors and so on. Uh, 
if you're looking at sort of the donor journey side of things, there's another extension called Chasse, um, which is specifically for that, uh, for trying to move through a, a series of different messages. Um, so that's another alternative that might be of interest if you're looking at kind of a, a sequence of, of stages and people moving through a set of messages. That's Chasse. Can you spell that? Chasse. C H A double S E with an accent. Oh, with the accent. Chasse as in a dance move, I believe. Okay. <clears throat> I'll, whack, I'll whack a link into the chat. Yeah, that's on there. Um, the other thing I was going to say was, uh, Barry, did you just want to point out the um, the schedule reminders scheduled job? Because if oh, that's not enabled, point. they yes. don't go out at all. Yes, that is a very good point, yes. Because, uh, yeah, that's happened quite a few times, especially on text messaging, actually. Um, so I'll just go back to my demo site. Six. Keep you guys out of the way, and I'll just present again. Right. So, in administrator system settings, schedule jobs. Let's leave this page. Am I sharing the right screen? Yes. Yes. Yes, I am. Sorry, I just see myself now. Um, so, here, if you've never looked at it is a list of all the jobs that are currently enabled and that are happening. So um, really, that one should be enabled, clean up temporary data and files. It's usually a good thing to put that one actually enabled because it does stop some of your um, temporary files building up and building up and suddenly wondering why your server's going really slowly because it's got no space left. Um, there's an extension, actually, that does delete unscheduled mailings, which is actually quite useful. Because you know, if your mailing has, if people create lots of scheduled, unscheduled mails and then forget about them, that can get massive, that list. That just deletes them, that any that are over 30 days old. And it's quite a really useful little extension that you can install. And suddenly you don't have this massive mailing list and you can go in, oh, guys, come on, can you clean up the ones you don't want? It just deletes them. If it's over 30 days. And again, you can change that information over here. So do 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 scroll me down, scroll me down. So these are all things that are mostly disabled on our demo site. So like actually isn't enabled at the moment. So send, send schedule reminders daily, send schedule send us always. And you got again, you can see here what's happening. These have never been run because they've got obviously we don't this is our demo site, we don't turn a lot of the things on. Again, yeah, so if you're setting up scheduled reminders, usually this, it's usually already been enabled, but it's worth checking. But I guarantee that the send scheduled SMS won't have been enabled um, because the system doesn't ship with it enabled as default. So you can just click edit, sends out. Every time the cron run, you can set it hourly. You know, you can change, you know, maybe daily. Um, Every time the cron was run, it depends on your site and it depends on how it's been set up. We tend to run them like every 10 to 15 minutes. And even to be fair, if you set it as hourly, it will it will run every hour after the cron's run. The cron will go, oh, I need to send out these. So, and again, you can just, is this scheduled active? Or you can also, um, scheduled run date so don't run the job before this time date which if you've got a lot of old tasks that sometimes get blocked and you you might want to go oh i haven't set that oh they're out of date now let's set this to run as of tomorrow and just save that so now we should have send scheduled sms hourly yeah and all it's going to do every hour it's going to run it and send that SMS out. I am going to disable it though, because to be perfectly honest, the I've just I haven't set up a SMS to come out of our data site demo site either, because otherwise it cost me too much. And I'll be sending out text messages, so I've just set a random SMS thing. Um, one thing to be aware of though, when you're sending, if you're using SMS, if I just go to myself, it's probably the plant. 
obviously I can't send an SMS to this contact because it just isn't a phone number. And to be perfectly honest, if I do, I'll do, and save that, actions, I still can't send a text message because Siri needs to know you've got a mobile phone. And I'm not sure if it's still, but it used to be if there's no spaces, it wouldn't work either. But I haven't tested that recently. So now, because it's a mobile, I've got an option for outbound SMS. So they need to have a phone number. It needs to be mobile. And I don't, it used to be that spaces would break it. I'm not sure if it's the same anymore, but it's all, I always err on the side of caution that don't put any spaces in if you want SMSs to work and it needs to be a mobile. And again, you can send hi tokens. Uh, name. First name. Um. Oh, as I say, there might be young people on there getting some what's mad max. And send SMS. This obviously works. Oh, I need to name it. This will fail because um, I mean, <laughs> it really wasn't. I haven't got an account. So, but as far as Sydney's concerned, it's gone to it's gone to check. It said, "Yeah, you got a mobile phone number. Yeah, you've got that. You've got an SMS provider set up. Sydney's done what it thinks it needs to do. Um, if you want to set SMSs, the two people we use are Twillo and Clickatel." They work really well with Civi. Um, they cost about three and a half P a text, between three and a half P, four and a half P a text. So it's not a big cost. I've had plenty of conversations though with people that say, but we can send them for free. And I'm like, how long did it take you to type that message? All about a minute. So it's not free then, is it? Oh no. And how many messages you've sent? 10. So it's taken you 15 to 20 minutes to send that. It's not free. Um, so that three and a half P to me feels, um, yeah, worth it. Sorry, is that a question? Dashes or lines cause glitch, similar glitches, spaces? Is that in cards to the phones? Yes, it is. Basically, if it's not a number, um, yeah, it wouldn't work. So it's a little bit of a pain. But it's... But it, and especially if you've got a database that's been built up over years, you will have lots of mobile numbers that aren't really in the correct format. There is some extensions that can help clean that up. Um, I've run into them a couple of years ago. I haven't really looked at them recently because, again, not needed to. But it's something that's just to be aware of more than anything else. Thanks, Barry. You're still screen sharing, by the way. Oh, thank you for pointing that out. Where is it? Stop. Oh, oh I've, I get used to all the other ones, but Jitsi now is just like, <laughs> it's still new to me. So, so just on that. Still um, screen sharing. Yeah, I'm still trying, trying to stop it. No, no, no. Cancel. That's it. There we yeah, go. Yeah. I'm here again. I'm seeing my plant. I, I was just going to say, following on from that, so so that the send scheduled reminders job by default is daily. Uh, now, Barry showed you that, that you can change that. <clears throat> um, but you've got to look at the interaction between uh, what you set up within the scheduled reminder. So, for example, in the scheduled reminder, you can set things, say, to send a reminder two hours before the event start date. But uh, you then got to look at quite when that is actually going to go. And so it's a combination of what you set there with when your cron job runs and with the setting on your scheduled reminders job. So there's quite a number of factors there that all need to play in together. Um, so just be aware that although you set the timing, for example, to say it's two hours before start time, it doesn't actually mean it goes then. Um, so you just need to look at those those things and 
probably do a bit of testing to actually understand quite how they, they fit together. As I say, we, we have a tendency to set our cron to run every like 15 minutes. So it's usually, I say that's our default setup. Cron runs every 15 minutes. And we make sure that schedule reminders just go with the cron, run with the cron. But that's how we set our sites up. Your sites may vary, as, as, as Aidan says. So it's always definitely worth checking, checking, and checking again. But once you're happy with them, you can then forget them until someone changes the cron job at some point for some random reason. Barry, perhaps you should explain what the cron job is in case oh. people are unaware. Yeah, am I the best person to explain a cron job? Dear me, in all technical terms, because that's all I know. Basically, this, uh, the server where your where city is hosted, so it's always hosted in a server in the cloud somewhere, um, and that server basically gets told to go to Civi and run this cron job every X amount of time. Some cron jobs run every five minutes some run for every month some run every year you can set up multiple different messages of cron runs and it, all it really is is basically the the server goes oh, we've got to go do something now and you just tell it to go and do it at a certain time and how many times you do it this it's quite complicated to set up so i don't really understand it to be perfectly honest i have copied and pasted a few of them <laughs> which is you know don't really understand kind of what i'm doing but as long as it works um i usually get one of my more technical advanced members of the team to do it uh but yeah it's it's literally just a, it's just a, something that the server has to go and check to run and do at a set time and to be fair city will tell you at the bottom of your screen if the cron job isn't running um so in fact i'll just quickly show you on that so help share the screen again screen screen share leave you guys over there right if you go system status warning on the bottoms of your screen of um hopefully it doesn't say system status warning on your site and it says set up cron job no crons have been recorded if that was working, it would tell you the last time it had run. Um, so you can actually work out really how often your cron job is running by just looking at this screen and going, OK, the cron job was run 20 minutes ago. And if you look at it in another 20 minutes, hopefully that's changed. So you'll know that it's running on a more regular basis than just once a day. Um, but yeah, it's an easy way to have a look. And as I say, City want you to have a cron job set up so it's usually been done but it's always worth double checking and you're right it's, sometimes it's hard to find out why but yeah every time it cron, runs a cron it will tell you here last time it's run and when it hasn't been run for a while it will tell you no crons have been running and give you a warning here this is quite a useful page actually if you've got if you do see any things that are going a bit weird on your site, you can have a look and go, oh, look, wow, all our extensions are up to date. That is unusual. I'll tell you why that is, because Cron hasn't run to go and have a check to see if they're not up to date. So these sort of things all rely on the Cron running because it won't know that they're out of date. So, yeah, and PHP's right, that's good. And it's a secure version of Civi, which is also another good one. Right, okay, let's cancel this again. Thanks, Barry. Are there any more questions? Okay, well, I might just turn the recording off now.